What up though YouTube, it's your boy Kelvin J and today we're going to be going on startup settings for the software Premiere Pro. This is the software that I use to edit my videos and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably use the same software as well. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Alright guys, let's go ahead and open up our software. As you guys know, I use Premiere Pro to edit Adobe CC. Go ahead and check it out. It's pretty dope. So I'm editing on a MacBook. So this is a, what is it, a 13 inch retina. It's one of the top ones though. So it's not the 4K cool dope one, but it's still something that's pretty good. All right, so let's get into these um, opening settings here. This is just basic stuff. A lot of you probably already know this stuff, but as soon as you open up, let's go ahead and just open up a new project. We'll name this opening settings. And let's see, we'll save it to We'll just save this right to the desktop. By the way, that's one of my clients, uh, Philly, right here in the background. Hope you guys enjoy peeping the photography. Um, I see here. I'm just gonna save that right to the desktop. Choose. And let's see. Now, some people will. And this depends on your computer settings and everything. But some people will have it set for metal. Some people have it set on open CL. Some people have it on software. If I'm not mistaken, if your computer has a um, what more powerful graphics card, then you would most likely use the GPU acceleration open CL. You have CUDA or something like that on your computer. But here, as you can see, we just have Metal OpenCL software only. So for my computer, it's more so recommended. Well, Adobe recommends that I use Metal. That's what Adobe support recommends. But besides them, I usually always edit on OpenCL. And lately I've been switching between software and I'll go ahead and show you guys why software and OpenCL makes a little bit of a difference, probably in a later video. But for right now, we're just going to keep it on open CL time code. I don't mess with this. Leave that the same audio samples. Leave it the same DV. I leave that uh, DV here. And I know Adobe, um, when I spoke to Adobe support, they also suggested to have it on DV for my computer settings versus HDV. So if you have a faster, better computer, you'll probably end up using HDV most likely. But we'll leave that. We won't uncheck that. Leave that blank. And yeah, let's go ahead and open up the file. As you can see, it saved it right here to the right side on the desktop, which is what we wanted. So now that we got the video, now that we got the software open, this is my layout that I made. Um, I put my boxes. This is my overall design of how I like everything to be placed while I'm editing. Now you can open the video footage through the software or you can drag and drop. I prefer to drag and drop. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this into my workspace here i mean to my project over here it's got wow import media start boom now we got that so now that we got the file in here it's going to open that up as you can see now since this is full 4k it's not going to play smooth um because i don't have a high speed computer like that but what we can do is still work with what we got. So I'm just gonna start it about 10 seconds in, hit the I on the keypad to mark it in, or you can click right here, which it shows mark in I. And then we're gonna come out about 30 seconds or so. Hit out. And I'm just gonna drag this whole video because I want the video and the audio. Not You can drag them separately here, but I want both. So I'm gonna drag both those into the timeline. And now we have the video in the timeline. And as you can see here, it still plays barely at all. <laughs> yeah, that's like horribly slow. So usually what I would do is um, 
create my proxies first but like i said i'm going to make that in another video for how to do proxies so that way you can get these uh, 4k files to play a lot smoother in your software but right now this is what we're working with as far as it being unrendered so we have this about 60 seconds and cut some of this off so we have it at 60 seconds here now now that we have the timeline created we're going to come up to our sequence and sequence settings and here now it automatically made the timeline the uh, sequence the same settings as the actual video footage because I dragged and dropped it right into the timeline so the sequence was already set up for you to match exactly what the what the um, original uh, frame size is but if you come down here you see the video previews for when you render is a lot lower which when you're doing your when you're doing your own editing i suggest to have it the full uh 4, 000, the full frame because if you do it that way you can end up exporting it a lot faster than exporting um but let's see for now what we're going to do is hit cancel exit that out the timeline and we're going to make a whole new sequence so let's come up here to file new sequence and here I use the, I shoot with the Canon Mark IV. So here I just have the digital SLR here. Um, so I use the digital SLR settings, but a lot of people, some people use Ari, you know, whatever you find that works for you that matches your camera settings or your footage, the, the settings that you shot, you wanna have that. So I got the digital SLR, DSLR, um, 1080p, now it only has 1080, 480, 720, but you can change it regardless. So don't worry about that. So let's say let's start with 24 because we shot. In, let's say we shot in 24 frames, which I did shoot this footage in 24 frames per second. Once you come over here, click on that and hit on that, and then it's going to bring up this with 1920 by 1080. But we don't want it 1920. We want it to be the 4000. So we hit on settings, DSLR 23. And here you can change it to 4,000 by, oops, I did not mean to click that so quickly. Let's go back, file, new sequence, 24 settings and 4,096. And I forgot what the other, was it 2160 or something like that? I forget, but I can always come back and change it to correct it if that's wrong. If that doesn't look right, but that could be right. I don't know. 2160. Uh, square pixel is going to have that on one. Uh, no field progressive. I want it on progressive scan, not upper or lower fields. This is what most digital uses and most currently standard is nowadays. Progressive scan. Uh, 23.976. Um, leave that the same 48 leave that the same and here I usually would set this for either the same as the 4000 2160 or have it um, a lot lower if you want your previews to render a lot faster in the software but if you're looking for competitive exporting times you can have it the same as that so that way when you have to go back in to change things for clients It'll be a lot faster on the export. So right now, let's keep it low for faster importing here. Leave that the same. Hit OK. So now we created our sequence. And if you go back up, you can check the sequence here. It's sequence settings. It's exactly what we just set up. And voila, voila. Now, also another thing to keep in mind when you did create your sequence, you can also change the name, sequence name. So you could come here, settings, blah, 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 create your thing, let's change the name to, let's say, uh, DSLR 4K settings or something. And then you can hit save preset. Ah, DSLR 4K settings. Boom, and it has saved this preset right over here on the side. So instead of clicking on digital DSLR, 
you could just go straight to the um, setting that you created and it'll pop up right down here in customs. As you can see, I made a few other ones here for a couple other settings that I use. I actually need to delete some of these actually. Insta settings. Boom, boom, boom. But uh, yeah, so the DSLR 4K settings, that's what we named it, boom. So let's go ahead and get rid of this other one since we change the name. So now we have this here. Let's check the sequence. Ah, 1920 by 1080. I forgot to change the uh, frame size. But I fuck it. Let's keep it 1920 by 1080. Yeah. All right. Now, now that we got these, let's delete. Actually, yeah, now that we got these, let's delete this one. Um, let's delete this one. And we have this sequence here. So let's go ahead and drag this into our timeline. And voila, voila. Let's see. Scale to frame size because remember, this box was 19 uh by 20 and the footage we have is 4k so you can see it's a lot larger this is the regular size here and as you can see here in this frame in our um timeline we can see that it is a lot larger so let's go ahead and just scale to frame size right click scale to frame size boom pops it in there and if you want to get rid of these black bars on the side and go to effects control and scale i just raise it up to like 108 Boom. And if you want to make sure it's right, 106. Yep, 108 was about good. It's a 108. And I just click on it to type it and change it. It's faster, in my opinion, than versus trying to scroll it like that. So, there's a 108. Boom. Now you have your video clip set up. We can go ahead and render this sequence, render in and out. I set up my shortcut keys for command E, which I'll show you guys in another video how to do command, how to do uh, shortcuts. But I set that up command E. So let's go here, hit command E. I'm on a Mac, so it's command E for me. And let's see how long this is going to take to render. All right, guys, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button, hit that alert button, subscribe, and leave a comment below letting me know about any future videos that you guys would love to see me do, or if there's tutorials, editing tricks, tips, um, anything like that. Just go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, you guys enjoy your day.